It's Major League uh, Pickleball announcing new members of its leadership team. This coming as the sport continues. So we were just talking about to see explosive growth now that I'm, I'm playing too. Uh, it features teams backed by names like uh, Tom Brady, LeBron James, and uh, Michael Phelps. Joining us right now is Giulio uh, DiPetri, uh, D D DiPetro. He's the Major League Pickleball CEO. And Bruce Popko, Major League Pickleball COO. Good morning, gentlemen. Morning. Good morning. It's, uh, it's great to see both of you. Uh, I, I hear that you have some news to announce here on the broadcast. Um, well, Bruce and I are joining the leadership team of, uh, of Major League Pickleball. Um, we're very excited about the uh, opportunities in front of us, and, and uh, it's great to hear that you've been, been playing, Andrew. Well, so <laughs> tell us how you guys decided you guys were doing this. And, and B, where are we, do you think, in the, in the sort of the journey that is professional pickleball? Um, I think we're in the very early stages, uh, the very early innings of the professionalization of the sport. Um, but I do think we are on the cusp of, of witnessing um, the birth of the next great spectator sport in America. Bruce, are you, is your sense, though, that the players that are going to be professional players, that they're going to be professional pickleball players, they're going to be tennis players that move to pickleball, they're going to be ping pong players that sort of, move, I mean, how does this work? Because they're, they're all sort of in the same genre. Right. The answer is yes, I would say. They're going to come from different areas. We're starting to see, though, this first generation of players who actually come up through the ranks playing pickleball exclusively, though. There are a, a whole slew of tennis players that have played, to your point, table tennis, badminton, but we now see this first generation coming through some of the best players in the world that we have now grew up playing pickleball exclusively, and their talents are coming through. In terms of where you think you can play this in front of lots and lots and lots of people, I mean, do you think of this as being as big as tennis one day? What's the, what, what's the size and scope of this? Yeah, I think it, I think it absolutely can be as big as tennis someday. Um, you know, we just had a, a tournament in San Clemente, California, Lifetime. Um, the stands were packed. It was a four-day tournament, and, uh, you know, the, the final day was on a Monday, and we weren't really sure how, how the crowds were going to do on a Monday afternoon on day four, but but the place was packed. Um, it, the content is just so compelling, and if no one has ever, if you've never seen pickleball at the uh, at the highest level, not to impugn your game, Andrew, but if you've never seen it at the highest level, it is really a remarkable, a remarkable thing. The athleticism on display by some of these athletes, you know, some of which are very recent converts. We have some some you know tennis pros who are you know cracking in the top ten in the world who are playing with us. But the best female player in the world right now is 16 years old. So there, there's a spectrum of, of age ranges, but the athleticism is, is remarkable. And it, 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 there, really is, there really is nothing else like it, especially with our, our team format at Major League Pickleball um, showcases you know, the diversity of, of athleticism and we think is what is finally going to break through and convert the tens of millions of avid players in, into fans. So I hear a lot of people, Bruce, talking about playing pickleball. But what about those of us that want to watch it? I mean, what are the media viewership opportunities looking like? And how do you monetize it? Yeah, so we've had a combination of our own YouTube channel that's shown really explosive growth, a 500% increase in viewership year over year. We also have the traditional partners. ESPN2 has been a partner to Tennis Channel, MSG. So as we develop kind of our long-term media strategy, the biggest thing for us in, in sort of our relative infancy is making sure that fans can easily find us. So as we look for our 24 media rights and beyond, um, that'll be certainly one of the things that helps guide us towards um, creating partnerships that work for both the media partner and for us really displaying all the talents of these players and these teams. How much does it matter that this is becoming such a popular game just for folks to play by them, I mean, on their own? Mm -hmm. and, and the reason I ask is, you know, is that what's going to create the interest, or do you think the interest is in creating stars in the league? Is it celebrities? I mean, I watched when Andre Agassi and, and, uh, and John McEnroe and a whole bunch of folks were playing. What, what, what is it that you think actually takes us to the next place? 
I'll take that. Um, well, one of the things we're working on is, is you know, we, we have a um, really an A-plus partner in terms of a, a, a production team that's been working with us behind the scenes to uh, produce some original, an original docu-series, which we we are hoping to announce soon. I can't, I can't break that news right now. Um, this is like, like a Netflix style, uh, like F1 or what they're doing with golf kind of thing? Yeah, exactly. Um, on pickleball professionals, which, you know, a lot of people would say, I didn't even know there are pick pickleball professionals, which is, right. but that's, that's going to change very soon. Um, and some of these stories are amazing. The athletes are incredible. And uh, we think that's going to be another way that through, through that storytelling is going to be another way that we're going to connect with fans. Um, we got to run. I have a final, just very selfish question. So I played this on a hard court, and we were talking about actually older folks who are getting injured playing this because it's you got to move pretty fast. <laughs> the ball, as you know, doesn't bounce very well, and that's part of the game. Is there a bouncier ball for soft for, for a softer <laughs> surface? Is there is there a thought about that? Um, currently, there's there's not uh, a movement toward creating a bouncier ball for softness. So you're going to have to no, just... No, for a softer uh, surface, like a clay. Like you could play on clay or maybe on grass. Um, you could do a Wimbledon-style situation. Look, we are in the early stages of the sport. There is going to be innovation going forward for sure. Um, I think at the professional level currently, we're, we're on hard courts. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, like I said, this is in the early stages. And there, will, there, will, there has been innovation and there will continue to be, I'm sure.